bottom of the sea. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Spurverse, my scale model universe, people of Earth. Welcome to part three of build the 132 scale flying sub from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. This is a Mobius kit. And when I left you in part two, we were getting ready to build this frame, uh, the base, I should say, for it. And it just, uh, we, we got a little carried away with, with, with length of show. So I try, to, I try to keep these under an hour so that um, all of you remain sane. <laughs> no, but it's, it's awesome to have every one of you with me and I, I, I do appreciate it. So what we've done is we've put some foam block down into the, the tray. This was just a simple tray that I had picked up from Hobby Lobby for a few bucks. And I have, I've just sort of glued it down to the base. I used some, some Elmer's glue. So, you know, it'll set in half an hour overnight. It'll be rock solid, but this isn't going anywhere. But what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the overall shape of it. And I'm starting to play with the waves. Um, I'm, I'm starting to sort of play with how it, how it, how it should undulate because that's what you're going to be looking at, right? You're going to be looking at the, the cresting and the crashing of the waves. And I want it to be really dramatic. So I'm, 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 I'm sort of playing with that right now. And it's really, it's a lot of fun. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting with a, uh, this one, this, this one is called a, a cool lop. And it, it's just a, a basic cutter. You've all seen these. Probably most of you have one. Um, great to have in your kit. And so I'm going to sort of carve my waves and, and make them, you know, get them to where I want them. And that will then uh, allow me to sort of look and see what else needs to happen because I need to think of this as the propulsion system pushing away the water from this from the from the ocean and as it's leaving the ocean and it's taking off it's creating this sort of undulating waves so that's what i'm working on now so step one is to get that all kind of where i want it and then after that we're going to give it a coat of plaster of paris uh any kind of plaster or sculpt will do. You could even use Mod Podge if you wanted to with some, uh, some shavings in it, some sand in it, whatever you really want to use. But for an ocean, basically, I'm looking for a smooth kind of finish here. So I'm going to be going with some uh, plaster sculpt. And uh, you could also use, there's a, a papier-mâché papier version of it as well. People also use tin foil. There's a thousand ways to do this. This is not that this is the ultimate way. It's just my way. And so step one is to, is to get, these, get these waves where I want them. And it is, it is a lot of fun to play with this and, and, and get this, this surface looking quite dramatic because... I think it's going to add a tremendous amount to this base and, and to the overall presentation, really. So I'm going to keep sculpting here. And when I've got something I'm really happy with, we'll come back and we'll go to the next step, which is to cover this with uh, your preferred covering, right? So whether it's paper mache or whatever it is, that will be uh, the next step. So let me continue to carve away here because you don't need to sit here and watch me play, play with this. Although I have to say, I, I'm, I'm having some fun. Let me get it to where I want it. We'll come back, take a look at that, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, I've got my Woodland Scenics carving plaster, and it's uh, ready to go here. So I'm going to start dropping that on this surface 
and um, kind of just playing with it a little bit. If we don't have enough, I'll just mix up another batch, but I'm not too worried about it because we can also um, use some other, some other things, uh, some other gels, some, some Mod Podge, things like that. But what this will, will do is it will get in all the nooks and crannies and it'll start to uh, create uh, a really interesting environment for us to play with. And that's the idea here. And this sets up really fast. So that's, that's sort of the benefit of it. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason here other than just to kind of create this, this kind of interesting scape that we can, um, we can uh, start playing with our ocean on. I want the ocean to be sort of dramatic. I want it to feel like waves are crashing and cresting because I think that will really uh, set off this this flying sub. Let's see here. I don't know why you're in there. A chunk that doesn't want to behave. We want to try and create some some really high parts too. Forty, you know, could be thirty foot seas, forty foot seas. I don't know, big seas. Okay. So anyway, you uh, you get the general idea. <laughs> you get the general idea. It's um, it's fun. I feel like. Um, feel like this I, I feel good about what we're doing you know I feel like this makes sense to me I think this is going to be dramatic uh, and I think it's a really fun way to present this okay so I'm going to continue to to play with this and get it all kind of undulating and as it starts to dry that's the fun that's the time when you can really start to give it some some shape and and you can carve it um, and then it'll go off pretty fast after that. Good stuff. Okay, we'll take a look at this after this is all set up and dried. So, while I'm letting the clamshells dry, I've, uh, I've got the pinstripe done on the top and the bottom. And uh, I've got the window sort of almost painted. I've got, I've got some... Uh, just some details to clean up there and I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. I thought we'd, we'd jump back on the base. Update on the base. Uh, it now has on the top of it, it has the plaster of Paris and, and then I sealed that. And then on top of that, I have put some tissue paper and some Mod Podge to seal everything. And that's down and dry. I also created a little bit of uh, drama here on the side of this, uh, on, the, on, the, on the side of the, of the stand here, uh, because I'm, I'm going to make that feel like water as well, so that it's all incorporated. Uh, here is my little hang tag, which is going to be my umbilical for power. And so I'm going to be able to drop my Uh, flying sub on top of this, plug it in, and I, 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 I should be good to go. And I'll have a power button uh, on the underside of the, of the clam. It's just a tiny little switch that came with the kit. So um, the, other up, the other thing I wanted to say to you is, is the great news is, is that the stand is absolutely solid now. It's solid, so it's not going to wobble around. So that's really good news. So what I'm going to do now is just apply a base coat of some acrylic paint to this. Now, it's going to be blue and a little green in here. My ocean is going to be 
kind of a, uh, a Pacific Ocean. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, paint, paint this with some blue like this. And then before this dries, we'll streak on some of the green just to get this darker. And uh, I can show you that in this little spot here so that you can see. The fun thing is, is I can move from paint to paint here and it doesn't really matter because once it, it gets its sealer coat on, it should, should be pretty good. And um, you can see here that what this is going to do is just add some definition to this. And now don't worry about the white parts because the fun thing about this is, is you're going to want foam and you're going to want all kinds of stuff like that. So that should be pretty good. And uh, the, fun thing about, the fun thing about doing this is, is I think the drama it's going to add to the flying sub, it, it's going to be perfect. I think it's, it's the right base for it. It's the right, it's the right feel for it. And uh, I'm, I'm happy I'm putting it in an ocean setting. Um, and it's not going to take up that much space uh, because it's actually smaller than the wingspan of the model. And it doesn't, you know, it, 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 you, you don't lose it because of the way I've set this up. Well, you'll see in the final presentation. But because of the way I've set this up, you're, you're not supposed to really be looking at at this, you're supposed to feel like it's flying in the ocean. It's just kind of to give it a feel, right? But I think that the drama it's going to create, not just for the, the model itself, but for your eye, is going to be fantastic. So I'm going to continue to paint this because you don't need to watch me painting. You, you know how to do this. But I, I thought it would be fun just to kind of show you the steps so that when we look at the final the kind of the final finished piece, um, we, can, we can sort of see whether or not we, you know, it makes sense uh, to, to you and, and, and certainly to me because um, I've never done this before. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've never built an ocean before. So I, this is all kind of just from, from all my art classes and, and what I know about how these things work. And of course, there's a lot of show and tell on, uh, on YouTube. That's the wonderful thing about the community. There's plenty of, there's plenty of uh, channels that have actually uh, will do a lot of ocean. Uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, oh, and I'm liking the green too. Um, here, let me, let me show you. That's that's working really well. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a little ominous, but it'll be great. So what we'll do is we'll continue to paint this. And then once this is painted to my satisfaction and dry, we're then they're going to uh, seal it with something called realistic water. And that's going to be step one to creating that, that, that illusion that it's, it's wet, it's, it's, it's real water. And uh, it's real fun to put that on and, and see the result of that. So let me get this painted. And when it's dry, we'll put on the, uh, the realistic water from Woodland Scenic. That'll be the next step. Okay, so my blue and my green paint has dried. And what I wanted to do now was just show you some of the other sort of steps to create these waves and, and the undulation in them. I'm going to put some wash down and let it kind of run into all the cracks and crevices just to kind of add that kind of veiny feeling to it. And then when that dries, um, we'll, let, we'll, we'll let that dry. We'll, we'll come back and we'll do some stippling with some other blues and greens and soften those in just a little bit where the waves are cresting uh, before we do anything else. Um, but I thought to myself, you know what? I want to show you this on camera because I, I, I think it's fun. Why not? You know, I mean, it should be illegal to have this much fun. <laughs> but hey, if you're going to do a base and uh, for something like this, you know, you might as well talk about some of the steps in case some of you have never done this before. Okay. Um, make your own washes. You certainly can. 
and should. Uh, very simple to do. Uh, you need just a, now a dark wash, right? So if you took a, like a Payne's Gray acrylic paint uh, and, and, and just added a little bit of uh, water to that um, and, and thin that out, you know, water for, for water-based, uh, you, you, could, you could do that. You can make all kinds of washes yourself. Uh, but I've got this quick shade, and, uh, and I like it, and you don't need an awful lot of it. Um, so I'm starting to apply it here, and you'll see I just let it, what I'm doing is just sort of randomly dripping this. You don't need a lot. And then I'm letting it sort of run into the cracks here and, and form these veins. And it's the veins that you want. That's the secret, because they're going to create this really kind of cool dramatic effect and uh let them let it run down into the into the darker corners right and with the q-tip what i'm doing is is just creating these sort of veins um and and pulling it and it pulls very nicely and it's a great effect you 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 don't need a tremendous amount and this is going to dry a lot lighter than you think. But uh, I think it adds a tremendous amount of drama and detail to this that you otherwise wouldn't have. So I think you can see that it, it's, it's starting to add this really interesting kind of spiny effect that you tend to get in deep ocean water when you look at it. Ocean water is not one color. Uh, it is not one, one sort of feel. It's moving. It's constantly in motion. And so that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to mimic that motion with, with some of this uh, color. And it's really going to make you feel like this, this, this wave, this wave action here that I've, uh, you know, I've, I've sort of created this little wave action here that it's really moving. And that, that's, what you're, that's what you're trying to achieve here. Um, I'll get a little in here. Um, and try to be random with it, too. You know, do, do think about the randomness of nature. And, and let, it, let it, in some of the cracks and crevices, let it just do its thing. And you'll start to see how this is really creating a very cool effect here. I'm really excited about this wave. Uh, I don't want it to upstage my model, but at the same time, I really want it to, to set it off, right? And so that's what we're trying to achieve here. So you can start to see that this is really creating a, a wonderful sort of visual effect. And it's really starting to... Uh, uh, to give you that, that sort of feeling of motion. And that's what I'm, I'm most excited about, is trying to build that sense of motion. And it's amazing how layers of color can do that. Um, it's, it's, it's really fun. Um, so if you're like me and you're into oil painting, uh, that's where you learn an awful lot about color and light and texture. And those things are really important to know because that's what's going to make your model building and your dioramas just really start to, just really start to pop. Um, so you can see just from the camera and I'll, I'll show you a couple of other angles here, uh, that it, it's really starting to, uh, to add this really cool, interesting effect. And I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with that. And I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to, to sort of be random with it. I'm trying to make sure that it, it's all over the, the model, because I, you, you know, you, wa you, want, you want a feeling of, of it uh, sort of being everywhere. You don't want it just to be patchy because that's how you get the best sort of effect out of it. Um, really happy with this. Super, super happy with this. 
And so that is starting to be quite dramatic. Um, I think I've got plenty on here. I don't want to, I don't want to overdo it. So we're going to, we're going to let this dry. Um, and when this dries, we'll come back in and we'll start doing some, some stippling. We're going to, we're going to just kind of follow some of the contours of the wave uh, to, to really kind of uh, pick, pick all that up. Okay. So that's looking really good. Super happy with that. Hard to tell whether or not the camera is really doing this justice or not. I don't know. But uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so the final step on preparing the ocean before we put some uh, realistic water over it to give it that really sort of watery, glossy feel and then uh, finish that with foam and other things is to get some, some stippling and some, uh, some shade variation at the very tip of these waves. Um, the reason why that's important is because it, it, it's, it's going um, it's to allow you to, to really get some, some definition. So what I'm doing is, is I'm using a, a slightly brighter couple of colors here. I've got a, um, this is a company called um, a Chrome, uh, Chroma that I've been working with. And uh, I'm, really, I'm really liking these colors. Um, they're, they're sort of an automotive color, really, but um, they, they do the job quite, quite well. And so what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm applying this color to the, to the very sort of crests of these waves. And not, not a lot. I mean, I, I'm, I'm stippling it on, and I'm being very, very sort of judicious about how where I'm putting it, but I, I do want that, that delineation. And, you know, you want to kind of follow the curve of the wave, really, because that's what will give you the drama. And that's what's, that, that's what's going to give you that, that really sort of perspective that you're looking for. So, as you can see, I'm taking it down, and I'm also following the tops of these peaks as well. And... Um, I'm going to keep sort of stippling this in and blending it in. And then I'm going to add another color, which is this um, same chroma, but this is, this is a green. Uh, just, to, just to get some more blending in there, really. And uh, after we've done this, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, apply when this sort of, I'm going to uh, apply the, uh, the water effects. And that should really start to make this pop. So that's kind of fun. But this is, you can see, this is really starting to accentuate the, the crests and the tops of these waves. And once it's all sort of blended in, um, it's just another, it's just another level of detail that this, uh, this oceanscape will really, uh, really benefit from. Now, Interestingly enough, I've, I've put the bottom of the clamshell on here just to sort of take a look. And um, it, obscures quite a, it obscures quite a bit, but that's okay. You know, I don't want this ocean. This ocean should not be the centerpiece. It, 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 you, should, you should go, oh, wow, it's coming out of the ocean and then move on to the rest of the model. If you don't, <laughs> because you don't like the rest of the model, often not. But I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm, I'm just fooling around. Uh, I, I really think this is going to make a huge difference. And I, I, I'm hoping once we get all of the various different elements in here, uh, that you'll agree that this is, this is really something, this is really fun. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to work on this. And I'm going, to, I'm going to start blending in some of the green. And then when I've done that, uh, we'll come back and we'll put the water effects on, let that dry and see what that looks like. And then we'll go to uh, the, final, uh, the final final on this. 
So now our wave tops have been sufficiently stippled and it's looking quite dramatic. We're going to put on our realistic water from Woodland Scenics. Now you don't, you don't shake this bottle and you don't brush it. You kind of let it just drizzle and, and you, 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 you've got to kind of let it find its, uh, its little world here. Um, and you could get some dripping down the side, which is why I've put a, uh, uh, something protective on my bench, but, um, this will dry in about 24 hours to an absolute crystal clear, uh, look. And that is the magic here because that's going to give this that water effect that we want, and then we can go ahead to start finishing it. Um, now, if you've got some nooks and crannies that look like they're not cooperating, just get yourself one of these little sticks here and uh, just kind of, whoa, just kind of smush it around a little bit. And, uh, until you, you see everything looking quite sort of glossy. And uh, then you should be good. You just got to try and cover everything. And that's the secret is making sure that everything does get covered. And um, when you have the complete surface covered, that's when the magic happens because you get this wonderful effect. Now, ideally, I suppose, looking back, the sides of this should be higher than the actual wave itself so that you, so that you make sure that you're not, um, you're not losing more than you, you need to lose here. But um, this stuff's pretty good at finding its own level, actually, I have to say. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And you can see it's already taking on this kind of crystal clear. And then we'll sort of look. I mean, as long as once this is rock solid, this is going to be amazing. And then we'll start adding the, the foam and uh, all the various other different elements to this. And uh, it should be quite convincing. I'm, 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 I'm always, always happy with the results I get when I use this. Um, so there you go. That's what this looks like. Everything is, is, is sufficiently covered now, I can see up close. I'm happy with that, especially my nooks and crannies. Um, I did a really nice job getting into those and everything has been covered. And that's the key is making sure everything is covered. And like I said, you know, you, you don't want to shake this. You don't want to do anything that will create bubbles inside of this. You just want to leave it alone. And, uh, you won't get a lot of shrinkage either. And it washes up with water, which is even, even better. So, okay. Um, I'm going to give this 24 hours to dry. We'll let this dry. And once this is dried, we'll come back and we will take a look at the, at, at, at sort of what we've got. And then we'll, we'll continue on to the, to the finish here. Lots to catch up on here. Apologize if I'm sort of in the dark, but I want you to see the light. Um, I have not connected my uh, headlights yet to the front, but they'll look like that. So that's those are working, you can see. So that they'll, they'll look like that. I just, I haven't connected them yet. Um, I, I put it on the stand uh, to sort of start this segment and then we'll deconstruct. 
uh, it's um, it's rock solid. The 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 base and the way the base was constructed stiffened up that plastic stand like a charm, and I I think it sort of disappears in this uh, in this uh, diorama, and I, I'm really happy with it. Um, if I was going to do this again, <laughs> there's a couple of things I definitely would do. I definitely would get some some fiber optics back here and get get a few more blinkies. I was afraid that it was just going to be too much. It can handle it and, and it could be a lot of fun. And it would be a reason to leave the, the lid on your, your, your roof uh, to be a, a, able to open it and close it. I chose to close mine because it turned out mine was warped. And I did try to warm it in warm water. I, I tried a couple of things to try and get it to seat, sit nicely. Um, and, it, and it doesn't. So if it was displayed and I did not uh, glue down that, that top, uh, it, it just looks ugly to me. And it's not a toy and it's not something I want to I play with. I do not like my models touched. So uh, it's something I left out. Would I do that again? I don't know. I don't know. I'm definitely going to build this again. I definitely am. It's one of those things where when you build it once and you learn kind of how it goes, you kind of want to build it again. I don't know. That's just how I am. Um, so let me, let me take you through a couple of uh, issues I had with wiring. And, and then we'll deconstruct. We'll take this off the base in real time, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you the base itself, uh, because um, I'm quite proud of it. Okay. So to get you above the model, um, several things I want to I, I, I want to address here. The first one is, do you see this right here? These wires went to. They went to this switch this switch here. This is the, the momentary switch, right? Now, the reason why that's important is because a momentary switch will turn itself off after a certain period of time. And the, the thought was from my dear friend Lou, and he was absolutely correct, is have this switch turned on and leave it on and then seal up your ship and have your switch on the outside. It was a great, it was a great comment. However, <laughs> my videos, you know, I mean, I, the way I shoot my videos is I do them progressively day, day by day by day by day by day. So even though you see one continuous unit and I don't call out day one, day two, day three, I just don't. Uh, perhaps I should, so it doesn't confuse the audience. But sometimes by the time it gets to you guys, some of your comments are great comments for everyone else, and including myself to learn from my mistakes. But they might be too late to correct something. In the case of this, uh, this switch here, um, it wasn't too, too late. So I, um, I cut it off. And, um, but before I cut it off, I'm glad I tested it because sure enough, it's a moment. It is a momentary switch, even though it just is turn, turns on and turns off. Once you pull the power, this does not re reset. It, it doesn't stay on. You have to, you have to touch it again. It's a good job I checked. So thank all of my subscribers who caught that and saved my backside. I just wanted to say thank you. However, it was too late for me to put a switch on the outside. I'd already built my base, but that's okay. I just power up and power down by plugging and unplugging. I do that anyway because out here in California, sometimes when we have power surges, uh, they, they can really blow things up. And I've had a couple of my lighting kits plugged in. Uh, we had a power surge and it blew them and that was it. They didn't come back. My, my spinner, my Randy Cooper spinner, that was uh, exactly what happened. I had it on and running. We went out. There was a power surge and it never worked again. I've learned my lesson. Okay. Uh, a couple of other funky things. Uh, this wiring harness, my wiring harness, it really, th this, um, this, uh, uh, let me get you on the right side. This board... 
had a couple of empty plugs, but I checked them with a circuit tester and there's no power coming to them. They're dead. Um, I could have figured out a smarter man than me, and perhaps if I'd have, if I'd have checked with, with my friend Randy Nobert or somebody, he could have helped me uh, jump some power to this. Um, I'm definitely going to do some research on that because if you can jump some power to this, you have two extra plugs. And if you have two extra plugs, you can power more lights. And that would have been terrific. And I think for the amount of money they're charging for this kit, uh, they should give you that option. Shame, shame on them, I say. But, uh, you know, I, again, if you have this kit, use it. It's, it's a good kit. I'm just whining and complaining, and I like to point things out that, for me personally, were just annoying. You know, the plugs are there. The plugs are there. Okay, uh, the, the other thing, too, here with uh, this... Uh, sorry, I keep putting you on the wrong side. Uh, the other thing, too, with my harness, I did not have enough lead to get power to my rear engines. I had to, I had to add a length of wire to comfortably get this over here. Um, it, 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 it's just for me, um, now I'm sure it was operator error, but I think they didn't give, give us, you know, they didn't give me enough lead. I, I would have liked this wiring harness to have just a little extra room on it, please. And then, you know, trust us to clean it up. Um, so anyway, I, I, I was a little frustrated with that, but other than that, um, uh, oh, and, and the floor, <laughs> <laughs> the floor light panel, it's a good idea. It doesn't work. Um, in my opinion, we, the, the, if you're going to, if you're going to do this, bypass that, that setup and put light under the floor. You'll, you'll be a lot happier. Um, I, 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 I wish I had. Okay. Um, let me just carefully turn it around. Um, because I, I want to, hopefully you can see that my my lights are on here and the effect from using loose masks to create the small blades is wonderful it absolutely works like a charm and uh when you have the masking set do it make the effort it really is cool and if um you'd had a, some kind of a pulsing light um, and some sound you could really go to town with this um, you'll notice uh, here in front of um, Crane and uh, Nelson, uh, you can just about see that the, the, front, the front lights are on uh, for the nav system. Uh, the TV, sadly, uh, didn't get lit, um, but hey, you're not going to see it anyway. And then, then of course, the, uh, the great... Um, the, the, the great reactor wall is lit. Uh, let me turn you to where you can see the reactor wall there. So let me just pull this, uh, let me pull this into there. And there it is. There's the reactor wall and it is, it's on and it's, it's looking good. Um, now there may be some light to that floor panel let's see here let me kill my overhead studio lights for a second here and see if we pick up see if we pick up anything i'm going to take a quick look myself um it is barely barely noticeable it it, it is on but it doesn't really do much so for me personally i was kind of disappointed with that but hey you win some and you lose some. Um, but overall, I think if you're going to do, if you're going to do plug and play, you know, go for it. Why not? I think it's worth it. I, I do. Okay. So, um, let me show you how this comes off the base. So what you do is I have a plug here and uh, it's a harness it's just a small little harness under here which on the day when i get ready for the final reveal i will um i'll have this neatly tucked up under the ship okay so it's un unplugged 
So the great thing about the fact that it is unplugged now is you can see my the power went out to it, but, but the genius of it is, is it just lifts right off. Just lifts right off like that. And I could put this over here. Okay. And we can take a look at this, this base. So, uh, let me turn my lights on here. Okay. So the base, here it is. Here's the front. I created this sort of dramatic ocean scene. Uh, you saw most of the steps. What you didn't sell me, see me do is put on the, the AK uh, foam effect and water effect. And what that is, is, is it's, this, it's this substance here. It's like caulking, really. And it, uh, you dribble it on the crest of your waves and then you dribble it or, or you, you, you dab it. Uh, you can do it with a sponge or you can do it with a brush and you, you get it into the swale and it creates this fantastic movement. Now, the, um, the, 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 the realistic water from Woodland Scenics gives you that illusion of, of liquid. That's the clear substance that's on here. And um, that that goes on beautifully. Uh, it dries relatively quickly. And uh, the other thing you can do too here is if you notice where it is, I've got this, this kind of almost like this bulging effect, this right here, is um, you can actually do that with a, with, a, with a stippling brush. Just stipple it on uh, a lighter color around your darker colors. Um, and then let, you know, after the washes have gone in and you can see it creates a lot of, of fantastic movement. So I'm really, really, really happy with it. And um, I think you'll agree, certainly from the wide shot, that it's quite dramatic. And uh, to finish off this model, um, I had my dear friend, Jeff Fink, um, I said to him, could you do me a favor and would you print me uh, a voice to the bottom of the sea base, uh, I mean, uh, uh, logo. Here he, here he has, and we will put that, um, we'll put that in the front here, like that, and um, that will complete this, this model. And what I may do is, I've got a couple of these, these stencils here. I don't know if you've ever used these before, but I've, I've, I've used these quite a bit. And, uh, they are from a company called um, Alexan Model. Uh, now, Alexan Model is, I believe, it's a Korean company. Um, but uh, what you can do is, is, if you want to, you can use those stencils and you can put FS1 some here on the logo or wherever you want. And I think that's what I might do. Okay, so um, there you go. We have a water base and we have our flying sub lit and, and ready to go. All I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to get that clamshell sealed up. It's going to take me a little bit of time because it fits nicely, but it's really awkward. So I'm going to use some five minute epoxy to give me some time and I'm going to carefully go around and I'm going to do it bit by bit by bit. I'm not going to try and, and, and do it all at once because um, I have really bad luck when I do that. <laughs> really bad luck. Okay, so um, give me a nanosecond here to get all that done. It's a few hours for me, maybe even tomorrow, but for you it's the next segment and the, the final part of our flying sub build. So uh, stick around and we'll do the final review. Well, we made it. <laughs> I mean, it has been... Uh, insane so i cannot tell you that you know all of a sudden southern california was having insane weather we've had uh flooding and we've had hailstorms and we've had 90 mile an hour winds we've had power outages but through it all the Spruverse studio continued to build and paint to the extent that it could which is why it's taken me a month of sundays to get the final part of this uh finished but here we are 
the 132 flying sub uh, in all of its glory from Mobius. And um, I have added the, uh, the, the lighting package from, from Mobius. And of course, my base, which uh, we, you know, turned into a bit of a thing. And I'm glad it did, because I'll tell you, I am incredibly disappointed with this lighting kit. And I know all of you are going, yeah, Phil, I could have told you that. Uh, I don't know why you bothered. There are so many other things you could have done. You could have added Twinkies and control lights through fiber optics to all of the side panels. You could have put a proper light below. And yes, you are correct. But I realized something as I was going through this exercise. When my models end up on a shelf, I don't do show and tell. So the very idea of having a, uh, an escape hatch slash top that pulls off and goes on and pulls off and goes on to, to look at the interior, not going to happen. You can see a sufficient amount through the windshield, uh, the, 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 front, the front glass, although not, not really uh, f for our purposes, but you've seen it. And all of you know how that re uh, reactor wall lights up. Looks beautiful. But that's, that's about all you get. And on the outside, you get a red light for the engines. Could we have done more? Absolutely. But I do think lose masks for the blades for those engines really adds a tremendous amount of value and detail to this. But I'll tell you, in person, it might not look much to you on camera, but in person, I am really happy with the way this base turned out. And I'm glad that it sort of is what it is, because when you look at it, it feels like this flying sub is taking off and coming out of the ocean. I couldn't be happier. And it's that drama and it's that kind of inventiveness that I'm all about. And I, I'm super happy with it. So if any of you decide to do a base like this, I say it's worth far more than any lights you can put in. Yeah, put your, you know, put these headlights on so it looks like it's alive and well, and I think that's awesome. And, you know, maybe even knock yourself out with, the, with pulsing engines. But to me, that's as far as I wanted to go, and I'm realizing now that bases can be more than just a base. They can add a tremendous amount of value and action and drama to a piece. Not necessarily diorama, but a base that feels like it's creating action for your model. And I feel like that's what I accomplished with this build. And that's the part of this that I really want to leave all of you thinking about. Because I know there's all kinds of other ways to display this. Yeah, you know, you can just put it on a stand and, and we can have uh, all kinds of lights and switches. And I think that is awesome. Um, not taking anything away from that. But I do feel that creating this ocean environment for this 132 scale to, to sit on was, was perfect for me. Okay, um, I, I also added my Voyage plaque at the front, uh, sufficiently oversized. But look, you know, everything Erwin Allen did was over the top. His color schemes, his monsters, uh, his storylines. You know, so come on, embrace the cheese and say, hey, this is the world of Erwin Allen, and just have fun with it. Okay, um, I've, I've, said, I've said my piece. Uh, so let's, let's, let's you know, just, just sort of go around it, um, and I'll show you the engines lit. But I feel like, you know, on this base, it does a tremendous amount. Now, I may yank, yank out my power cord. I don't, I, I don't know, but um, hopefully we won't. Um, but you can see, uh, I think this is a lot of fun. And we've got Crane and, and uh, Admiral Nelson sitting at the controls, sufficiently lit by that front console that you'll never see. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, but again, for me, look at that. That, to me, is the story. It's flying over the ocean, and that's what this is. It's a flying sub. So I think we accomplished everything we wanted to accomplish. Uh, I do want to show off Lou's masks here um, because... Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm really super happy with what happened. I've loosened up my, my close up here and I'm going to very carefully, hopefully not cause any accidents, but I, I want you to, I want to lift this to camera and you can see the turbines. You can see these blades and they work. 
they do a fantastic job at creating detail for this. And so, and they come in the masking kit. So I think that they are, they're worth, they're worth it. Um, I should have used the masks on the floor. Um, I got scolded for that correctly by the great guru himself. You'll correct. Uh, the lighting kit, that floor light, waste of time. Um, and again, for those of you who have the kit, uh, the lighting kit, I, I encourage you to use it. Put it in your model and finish it. I'm not denigrating it. I'm giving you my personal experience, my opinion of, of what I think, you know, uh, what I thought of it. And again, because we're a bit of a test kitchen, I'm glad I did that, you know, lesson learned. Would I build this again? Most likely, you never know. Um, I, I certainly had a couple of them in the stash because, you know, I'm always paranoid about something breaking and I need to know I can get, get more. But anyway, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. That's a therapy conversation you don't want to have with me. Okay, so here it is in all of its glory. Um, could, not be, could not be happier with it. Uh, just a quick trip around one more time uh, so that we can see what it's all about. Um, and I think you'll agree that this is definitely a, a flying sub to, to have in your collection. I love the scale of it. Although, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to end this episode and go have a, a, a serious negotiation with Mrs. Spruver about real estate because we got a lot of big kits coming down the pike this year. And holy moly. Um, and don't forget, in April, um, I'm going to be finishing the 1350 refit. Oh yes, with the uh, with the with that fantastic Aztecing um, paint um, paint uh, setup. And as you know, we have a special guest who's going to come and do a masterclass for us on how to do that. I'm pretty excited about it. I think most of you know who it is. But anyway, um, I still don't want to say too much about it just yet. Cause I want to make sure it happens. So anyway, um, there it is. From my shop to yours, the uh, 132 scale flying sub from Mobius on its ocean stand. Uh, thank you for going on this journey for me and having patience that I haven't posted for a couple of weeks. I apologize, but uh, as you know, we've had a, it's been crazy town here weather-wise. Uh, please, all of you, be safe, be well, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.